Good morning. So I'm just on uh, my last long run before an Andres Cares resilience run, which is on May the 1st, which I'm doing in aid of mental health support of residents and staff at Ananda. And today I've just, well, I'm coming through 30 Ks at the moment and my heart rate's around 150 and has been for the last three hours or however long I've been running. Uh, so I wanted to, to just do two things while I'm running is obviously plug the run and if you can support it in any way that would be great but also to do a quick training session about the link between exercise mental health and our body's response to stress so just put simply what's a marathon got to do with mental health well a lot of marathon runners run and run long distances to get into themselves to to meditate to get into their own sort of mindset it's like a meditation i would think as well as increasing their capacity to pump blood around their bodies or oxygen around their bodies to the cells so we all have uh, a system within us called the fight flight and freeze response to stress or danger and that's very important and we've had that forever but essentially it was originally to help us decide whether we should fight something uh, run away from it or, or freeze and we're talking about you know tigers or woolly mammoths or something like that and that response would kick in for as long as it was needed to get us out of the danger and then it would it would die down the problem is in modern society especially in the last 20 to 30 years with social media and technology uh, a lot of people's fight flight or freeze uh, response has been switched on a long for a long time and sometimes 24 hours a day which is extremely unhealthy and the reason for that is uh, that response is actually a physical and mental response which your body uh, switches on and off and the response to needing to run or needing to get away doing a marathon but also having to fight is is operated by a thing called the sympathetic autonomic nervous system which is a long word but it's sort of automatic and it kicks in and you can control it to an extent but it sort of does its own thing when it's needed and the sympathetic autonomic nervous system works rapidly to pump well to to pump uh, chemicals around your body which help you do a number of things and those things are get blood quickly to your brain so you can think more clearly uh, dilate your eyes so you can see opportunities for getting away and they pump blood to your major uh, muscles of your arms and legs to either run or fight and and on the opposite side they reduce the blood flow to your skin your kidneys your stomach so that's why for a marathon runner it's very difficult to eat anything because my stomach has essentially shut down so if i put anything in my stomach it'll just come straight back up again sorry for the analogy and because when you're running or you're fighting you don't need to be eating you don't need to be digesting food you don't need to be going to the bathroom and you want to conserve fluids and if you get stabbed or bitten you want to reduce the amount of volume of blood you lose and that's what the sympathetic autonomic nervous system controls now and that's the funny thing when you've played sport or you've done some exercise and you suddenly want to go to the bathroom straight after it's because the other side of the equation comes in something called the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system and that's the thing that it's kicking in with me now that my heart rate's rapidly dropping from 154 to it'll be below 100 within a minute because I don't need it to be keeping my heart rate that high now 
And when the danger's over, you don't need your heart rate and your blood pressure to be high either. And you can go to the bathroom again, you can start digesting food again. And that's all good. Now, Dr. Goal would tell me that having, you know, running a marathon's bad for you because your heart rate is 150, 160 for four hours, five hours. And that's true, and that is true. But when I stop running, my heart rate, my resting heart rate, would be around 40 to 45. But the difference with someone who's chronically stressed is their heart rate is not 40 to 45. It's constantly in that turned on, fight, flight or freeze response, operated by the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. And stress could be anything because what you're stressed by is internal to you. So yes, coronavirus is stressful. Uh, the economic situation we have at the moment is stressful, but it, but it doesn't have to be stressful. It's the stress that you feel is controlled in your brain. And that's where the link between exercise, mental health and physiology comes into it. What can you do about it? You can exercise more and you can get out into the fresh air more and you can learn to when you are stress when you feel your heart rate quickening when you feel your breathing quickening your throat dries when you're angry or frustrated and you'll know those feelings <sighs> that you stop and you take 10 seconds to say okay i know what's happening here and it's not gonna it's not good for me i mean sometimes it is but if it's happening throughout the day and it's happening all the time it's not good for you and if it's when you're asleep or you can't sleep, it's definitely not good for you. And that's why turning off your social media, turning off all your technology is important after a certain time. But you will know the triggers to your own stress. What you won't possibly understand is you actually have the ability to control them as well. But it takes practice. And my heart rate is 40 to 45 at rest because I use my heart a lot running i run several hours a week it takes practice the same as meditation it takes practice controlling your breathing and learning to relax when you're getting anxious is not always easy but it is important and it is controllable so the more you understand it the more you can perhaps do something to control it and during this time where we will all understand that sometimes you just need to turn the TV off and not listen to what's going on out there. It doesn't help. We know what the situation is and, and we cannot control it, but we, control, we can control our own feelings about it. And that's what we're doing at Ananda. We're training, we're working as a team and we're doing what is in within our control and having chronic stress about it doesn't help the individual and it doesn't help the team. I don't know if that made any sense, but that's my thoughts on the run and I am going to run now because I'm about two or three Ks from home now and it's been a long run. So please support Resilience Run. Please look after yourself. Namaste and spread love, not germs.